Hey everybody, it's Wilbitz! We're playing Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. Case 3, Trial, Day 1. Bam! Court is now in session for... How do I say that? I don't... What am I... What am I going on? Machi Tobayo. The pixie of the arpeggio. This has not helped. My... I don't understand. Is this another language you're speaking? Right. Uh, he's trial. Court is in session. That's right. It's Machi Tobai. The guy who doesn't speak the language and is blind. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Are you Apollo? Are you ready? The prosecution is A-OK, -okay, head judge. Huh? Hmm. Very well, Prosecutor Gavin. Ah, my opening statements, yeah? <laughs> no, no, actually, there was something else I wanted to ask you about before we begin all of that. Uh, yes? That's weird. Okay. Say you're going to visit someone in the hospital with an incurable disease. Hypothetically, not something I'm doing, just in theory. What do you say to them? Is it a joke? Eh? I mean, you wouldn't say, get well soon, right? Because you know they never will. They'd be insensitive to just be like, oh, well, I hope they find a disease, a cure for your incurable disease. Doomed friend. You'll only be kicking them when they're down. Um, what are you talking about? <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to visit someone who is terminally ill. Right after this trial, the Chief Justice's son. <laughs> the Chief Justice? His son is afflicted with the most terrible disease. He doesn't have long, it seems. Ah. Oh. I'm sorry about your... Your friend. So I thought I'd go pay him a visit. I thought saying something moving might be the order of the day. So I thought I'd use the time in the trial to just, you know, figure out what's going on. This is kind of dark. Why don't grown-ups ever just say what's on their mind instead of pretending? Just ask us. We're here for you, Judge. We're your only friends. We know that. She's looking at me with something like disgust. I... No! Hey! What are you looking at me like that for? I ask you for stuff. I ask you for that stuff all the time. It really brought down this murder trial. We were all having a good time until you came out here talking about something depressing, Judge. In any case, I'm a bit busy today, so let's wrap this up quickly. Prosecutor Gavin, uh, your opening statement, briefly. Young in luck, Herr Judge. I believe you'll be going on your hospital visit sooner than you think. Uh, 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 uh no! First, review the victim in this case. Roma Romain Letus, age 35. The global manager for Diva Songstress, La Miroir. <laughs> because of death, a blood loss due to being shot by a large caliber revolver. This report has all the details. The court accepts this into evidence. Alright, we have... We do have evidence because we went exploring around before, so... 45 caliber, that's quite large, isn't it? A direct hit from that could knock a man off his feet. However, the bullet struck him in his shoulder. The damage to the body was slight. Death was not immediate. Sadly, his blood loss was such that he could not be saved. Hmm, I suppose the victim's condition could have been much worse, considering... Two shots were fired. One shot missed, the other penetrated and passed through the victim's shoulder. Both bullets were found in the wall at the scene. Observe the diagram. This is where the bullets hit. I see. The court accepts this evidence. I think that outcropping of that wall is going to be really important at some point already, just glancing at that. If we're talking about a 45 caliber revolver, we must assume that the killer was adept at the weapon's use. Really? Yeah, apparently weapons that size have a powerful kickback. If, say, the judge tried to fire one, it'd break every bone in his body. Every single bone. Not just his arm, not just his fingers. He would be shattered like glass. The defense will take more care in choosing examples. I don't want to be shattered like glass. Or, or any, any shatterable material. As I was saying, the victim was shot backstage in a dressing room. The dressing room has only one entrance, this door. 
It does seem to be the case, yes. However, there were witnesses who heard the gunshots. He's talking about you and Emma, huh? Yet when the witnesses entered the room, it was empty, save for the victim's body. Hmm? But, but that's... that's impossible! Exactly. This matter was impossible. For all but one person. One person? That is, of course, the defendant, Machi Tubai. Is it because he's small and he's really tiny, so you think he went through the vent? But I don't think he would have been able to shoot him. Only the defendant could have committed this crime. No, I think he couldn't have at all. The defense says you're full of baloney. But how? It's quite simple. The circumstances of the crime scene make it clear. Very well. I assume you have testimony to back up this claim. Let the witness please take the stand. Who's our first witness? Ah! Oh! Emma! Her name and profession, please. Emma Sky, I'm a detective for the police department. I was on security detail at the concert forum that night. Emma seems, uh, tired somehow. Hmm. Security at the concert, you say? Some security I was couldn't even stop a murder. <laughs> now, don't blame yourself. Things like this happen. I've made even bigger mistakes in my career, you know? Like, like every single trial, I just barely pay attention to what's even going on. I'm not even sure wh wh where we are right now. I'm sure that makes her feel much better. I want to hear about these bigger mistakes. In any case, because you were on security detail, the crime was quickly discovered. And would we were able to identify the killer. You may give the court your testimony, if you would. Describe the circumstances of that day, and your discovery of the crime, please. Alright. Murderous Circumstances. The night of the murder, I was on security backstage at Prosecutor Gavin's request. Only people involved with the concert in some way were allowed backstage. At the beginning of the third set, I heard shots. I went into the room filled with blaring rock music and found the body. I examined the scene and determined that only the defendant could have done it. Hmm. Hmm. That's not very conclusive. It was lucky that a detective was the first on the scene. But that door was the only way out of the room, right? Yeah, pretty much. Then I don't get it. How can they say that Machi did it? Looks like we need a bit more information. Time to start pressing. Very well, the defense may begin the cross-examination. Yeah, I agree with everything that Chad is saying. This guy is too small to hold the gun, probably doesn't know how to use it, he's completely blind, he's not going to be able to carry things around, that body around anywhere, and he's blind. And has no motive, as far as I can tell. S some stuff to uncover here. Night of the murder, I was on security backstage at Prosecutor Gavin's request. The night of the murder was the night of the concert, yes? That's right. Well, what was the detective doing on security detail, might I ask? If it was only a concert... My thoughts exactly. <laughs> but orders are orders, even when they come from rock gods. Prosecutor Gavin? Yes, allow me to explain. I smelled something that day, you might say. The stench of conspiracy. Ooh. That day, at the concert hall. Conspiracy. Well, isn't it obvious? My keys that whole morning, was the whole day was ruined. And it's all because someone stole my keys. I couldn't guide my hog to the show. I couldn't open my guitar case. There he goes again. Isn't it possible he simply misplaced them? Misplaced them? Misplaced items don't wander into a murder's victim hand on their own. What's this? Prosecutor Gavin, if your keys were in the victim's hand, that makes you a prime suspect. Oh, good uh oh I can't talk over that, it's too cool. Love, slow acting anew. Atroquinine is waiting for you. He's singing something. Does everything with this guy have to be so over the top? The killing happened in the middle of my concert. I was, like a sailor, adrift on a sea of sound. Anyway, I didn't want anything else stolen. 
So I put the detective with the most time on their hands on the task. I see. I, I can accept that. I can't. What do you mean, time on their hands? Please, the testimony. Only people involved with the concert in some way were allowed backstage. And me, because I was there. And so was Trucy, because, yeah. We had tickets. We were let in, though. I didn't know about that. I certainly didn't invite you. I gave the Fraulein special permission to be there. I wanted to see her again. Oh boy, did you hear that? We're officially involved now. Ooh. And I think, I think that, that the gammon likes me. Gee, great. Some other hangers-on tried to get backstage, but I drove them off. So no other outsiders were there then. And then, at the beginning of the third set, I heard shots. Couldn't it have just been music? I believe we were having a chat when we heard the shots. You were the one chatting. I was eating snackoos. Because I'm a professional. Um, hey, no snacking in court. Unless you have enough to share with all of the judges. And your shows of shots came from La Mirage Group? Yes, absolutely. Hey, I'm the one being cross-examined here. Here, this will keep you quiet. Tonk. Uh, thanks. Thanks for hitting me in the head. With... I can only assume is a piece of beef jerky or a chocolate thing. So, um, how about it, Emma? Mm, mm, mm. Well, you're right. Mm, uh, there, mm, hard to be mistaken mm, about that. Mm, mm. Please, either talk or eat. Not both at the same time. And I already told you you can't eat, so just talk. Quit eating snackles. Get out. Or quit eating. Mm, right, so after that, me and Mr. Lawyer there open the dressing room door. I went into the room filled with blaring rock music and sound the body. I feel like we should be a witness. Can I cross-examine myself? Rock? Blaring, yes. When you say rock, are you referring perhaps to this rock and roll music that's so popular these days, I hear it's brand new and just came out? That's right, when we went to the dressing room. Music was blaring over the speaker on the wall. They pipe sound from the stage into the backstage through speakers. That way people in the back can hear when they're supposed to be on stage. Did it have to be so loud? You don't listen to the governors with your ears. I do. How do you how do you listen to things? Do you use your butt? You feel it with your entire body and soul. So yes, your butt. I always have the backstage monitors at full volume. When we walked in the room, the band was playing Guilty Love, I believe. Being it easy to determine the time of the crime. Hmm, if you could hear that music playing. Seen everyone on stage with that song has an alibi. Including myself. Unless someone was not on stage and playing the music pre recorded. Unless something happened and their music was really out of sync because they were doing something else. Speculating. Anyway, I closed off the scene and started my investigation. I examined the scene to determine that the only, 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 the defendant could have done it. Hmm. Hmm. How could you know something like that? As I said, it was clear from the circumstances. Listen, we know there was only one exit from the room. That door. The small window only opened a tiny crack. And I was standing in front of that door. So, how could the killer have fled the scene? There's only one possibility. The air vent. Ah! But, but that air vent was too small. Who could possibly... Exactly. Ah! Uh. There's certainly no way you could get through. Nor me. The only one who could fit through was a child. A child? Remember, access to those rooms was limited. Only those involved with the concert were allowed. And of all the people involved with the concert, only one is small enough to be considered a child. Unless Trucy did it. Trucy, if that is your real name. The, the defendant. The pixie of the arpeggio flitted up towards the sky and disappeared from the scene of the crime. Objection! But, but that's just conjecture! 
Oh, there was no other way out of the room. You were there, you should know her forehead. And there is another vital piece of evidence. Evidence? Marks were found on the air vent grill. Traces that it had recently been opened. Wait, what? And something else was found quite clearly. The defendant, Machi Dubai's fingerprints. What? No, why wasn't I told about this? Order, order, order! That event was the only way out of the room. The defendant's fingerprints were found on the grill. Well, have forehead. What fairy tale did this suggest to you? Huh? <laughs> Only one could pass through that vent. That doorway to heaven. As the other songs that we wrote about a doorway to heaven. And that is our pixie. Uh, what are, why are you looking at me, Apollo? I didn't do it. Quit saying I did it. It's not always choosy. It's never choosy. I don't kill anyone. Just audiences. Knock them dead. Hey, 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 I was hoping it out in the audience. So this was his decisive evidence? Mm, quite decisive indeed. I believe that's enough of that. The prosecution has a rather convincing case. The only way in and out of the crime scene was watched, making the defendant the only one who could possibly leave the scene. Simple and decisive. Uh, I believe we've heard enough to determine our verdict. Even if I wasn't in a hurry to make a hospital visit, which I am, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that. I'm sure the Chief Justice will appreciate the gesture. Unfortunately, we have no direct witnesses. Fortunately, the criminal left decisive evidence for us. That, uh, that will have to be enough. No, it's not enough. It can't be over already. I will find a contradiction of some kind somewhere. Very well, I believe this trial is finished. Thanks, I'm gonna head out and earn some brownie points with the Chief Justice. The defense has no contradicting evidence. I... what? The prosecution has presented our proof, clear and plain. If you have contradicting evidence, it had better be clear and plain. Uh, Apollo, they've got us on the ropes already and we've just begun. We'd better come up with something quick. I know, I know. All right, okay, think what can get us out of this. We need evidence, or a witness, that can prove Machi is innocent beyond a doubt. Without that, oh. Mr. Justice, do you have contradicting proof that can overturn the prosecution's case? If you do, you'd better tell us about it right now. This is it, and so soon. If I mess this one up, it's all over. The court wants contradicting proof? Court record, what do I have? There's a brooch. We have a mixing board. That's not going to help us. They're not going to believe anything about that yet. The gun that he couldn't have used? I mean, that seems important. Ultimately, with the profiles... Lemuroir! He's never not around Lemuroir! So he would have an alibi if she knows where it is! I feel like that's where we start. Let's call a witness. Prosecutor Gavin, you claim that there were no witnesses to this crime. Are you absolutely sure? Absolutely. I'd swear it on my career as a prosecutor. And on my million seller hit song, Atroco 9, my love. There he goes again. That's too bad because there was a witness. Oh, really now? But how did you come to possess knowledge the prosecution clearly does not? Because I'm the only one in the world who knows this. What's going on? I just talked to him, and now... He... he's alive! Uh, Mr. Latouse, can you hear me? Cold. So cold. Witness. You're, you're cold. Don't worry. You're going to be fine. Help's on the way! Gun. Hang in there, Mr. Latus. Tell me, who was the witness? 
Sack drin. What? The victim said this before he died? Perhaps he did. And perhaps he did not. He did, you big... He, he saw... There was a... What do you mean by that? All we know is what Herr Forehead says he said. It's no testimony, especially since it comes from the defense attorney himself. But it's the truth! I mean, yes, it's hearsay and inadmissible in court, but it's still true! I even told you about it! But apparently you ignored me completely because it was convenient for you! It's my policy to fully investigate everything I deem relevant. The elite's this rookie lawyer thinks he can tell me how to do my job. Ooh, ooh. That's enough! Mr. Justice, we need clear, contradictory proof from you. This witness of yours, unknown to the prosecution. I hope you're right. Failure carries a stiff penalty. Perhaps a stiffer penalty than usual is called for. Uh, there's no backing out now. Let's hear the name of your witness, Mr. Justice. Lamioa the Siren. Lamioa. Recall Mr. Latouse's last words. The witness is Siren. The Siren. Aha! He meant the siren, not like a whoop 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 police car. That's right, the siren of the ballad, Lamiroir. Lamiroir was only on stage for the second set, and she had access to the backstage area. She could have been a witness. I see. Well, Prosecutor Gavin, my claim still stands. There was no witness to this crime. Very well. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth, then, shall we? We will now take a break from Detective Imaskai's cross-examination. Please show Lamoir to the witness stand. Lamoir would say nothing about the nothing out of the murder. Not today, though. Today we'll drag that story out of her no matter what it is. Oh, oh, oh.